Well, hello, I am Paul Coates. I'm the director of Lebanon's Recreation, Arts and Parks Department. And I'm Rod Finley, uh, city engineer. The process is a is an interesting question. And, and so Rod, you've you've joined this conversation too, which we appreciate the the work that you'll be offering to this whole process. And we're hoping that you could speak a little bit about how does this how does the process can carry forward from here and what's the overall schedule look like? As you can imagine, uh, the process uh, it consists of many steps uh, and it takes some time to get through. Uh, uh, given the fact that we do have federal funds uh, supporting the process. So once once there's a notice to proceed uh, given with the design, uh, the first thing we do is we have a public informational meeting and uh, also known as a local concerns meeting. And so that's a public meeting where where anybody in the public can show up uh, and voice their comments and concerns or recommendations uh, regarding the project. And and after that, um, uh, normally we would develop some alternatives. Uh, in this case, we're following the rail for the most part. We may have an alternative or two when it comes to the traversing the slope down to the skate park area. But uh, in any case, we develop some alternatives. And then there's another public informational meeting scheduled to uh, review that uh, those alternatives and, and uh, seek additional input. At that point, there's an engineering study that's done, which is uh, to sort of uh, uh, put all this information together, uh, what we've learned from the public. And then uh, that is reviewed by the uh, Department of transportation um, as well as uh, as well as the city uh, and then the 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 uh, report gets finalized uh, and approved uh, at that point we can go into preliminary design where you actually would work on the design of the greenway uh, drainage design that sort of thing and then we draft what's known as a NEPA NEPA document which is essentially an environmental document that looks at uh, myriad environmental issues uh, um, with the project, including uh, rare and endangered species, including both animals and plants. Uh, for instance, in Lebanon, we have the barren strawberry, which is an endangered plant, and we have the long-eared brown bat which is an endangered uh, animal. And so both those things are prevalent here in Lebanon and we routinely deal with those, uh, those two species. Uh, we also take a look at historic districts, if any exist, and historic structures along the corridor. Uh, one structure I can think of that's probably historic is the stone underpass uh, that may get some uh, uh, scrutiny. Then once we have the NEPA document drafted, uh, that is submitted for review along with the preliminary design. And those two documents get uh, reviewed and commented on. And eventually um, what we're looking for is what's known as a FONSI. And a FONSI is a finding of no significant uh, impact. Uh, um, and that's the acronym FONSI. And so, uh, once that's done, we can move into final design, uh, make a final design submission, which also gets reviewed by the Department of Transportation in the city. Once we get that approval, we move into a phase that's called plans, specs, and estimate, or PS&E, uh, where the final submission is made, and then which kicks off the right-of-way process. So if there's any uh, impacts uh, outside of the right of way onto private property. We have to consider those impacts and follow the Uniform Act to negotiate uh, fair and reasonable compensation. Uh, then we do a little permitting. We may have some shoreland permitting, possibly along the river, and we may have some wetland permittings for uh, impacts of jurisdictional wetlands. Uh, once those uh, processes or applications are developed and submitted, they get reviewed by the uh, Department of Environmental Services. And then when all that's said and done, we can uh, use our beautiful OpenGov project solicitation procurement program, which is uh, 
a new uh, online program to solicit uh, bids for the project. We would av advertise through the OpenGov program. Uh, contractors were, will submit bids, will review the bids, select a contract, award the contract, and start construction. So that whole process will take approximately 20 months to get through. And so if we uh, if we had a notice to proceed uh, this summer, uh, we could be building uh, the Greenway in the construction season of 2026. So uh, it's a long process. There's lots of things to do, uh, particularly when federal funding is involved, uh, as you saw from all those steps we have to go through. But uh, but that would be a 20 month schedule and and uh, if we do uh, get moving, uh, then we'll be uh, ready to go in 2026. We will have a functioning Greenway extension all the way out to 12A. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that time, although it seems like a long time from now, will be upon us and we'll be able to enjoy it soon enough. So um, yeah. thanks for laying all that out. There's, that's certainly sure. an educational moment to learn about everything that goes into a project <laughs> of this magnitude. Right. And uh, we'll be right there together doing this. So thank you so much, Rod. Yeah, nice work on your part too, Paul. And I'd lastly say to folks who are interested in this process to stay in touch with us. We, we, the city will be building a project page on the city's website that's, that's hosted on the Department of Public Works main page. And mm -hmm. uh, project updates will be offered in that, on that and website. You can even subscribe to receive updates as they're put onto that website via text or email straight to your inbox. So when that will that will come out um, in in future months here.